Hello, and welcome back. In this small lesson, we'll review who is at risk for falls and what they can do to take back control from the risk for falls. According to the CDC, the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, and the National Institutes for Health, there are many fall risk factors. Below are listed just a few. Anyone over the age of 65 is more likely to fall than those younger. Older persons simply have a chance of having more comorbidities that can lead to falls. In fact, older adults have over a one in four chance of falling each year. And once you increase to ages 72 and 85, the chances of falling increases to one in two persons every year. So age is a leading factor for falls and that cannot be modified. But if you are aware of the fall risks associated with your age, you can do your best to stay strong and active because another leading cause for falls is weakness, primarily in the legs and any balance or gait disturbances. Perhaps you lean to the right when you walk or you have a hard time clearing your feet when you walk. You already walk with a device or you have dizziness with standing or vertigo. Another leading cause for falls risks is taking four or more medications, specifically those for blood pressure, certain antihistamines, certain pain meds, and antidepressants and antipsychotics. Often people who have comorbid conditions are on medications to manage them. Never stop a prescription without talking to your prescriber, but Keep a list of all medications and all prescribers with you at all times and show them at each appointment. People with any type of foot or footwear problem are at risk for falls as well. From the need to wear a brace to support a weak ankle, uh, to peripheral neuropathy, to unsafe shoes or ill-fitting shoes or no shoes, what you decide to put on your feet each day goes a long way to prevent a fall from occurring. One of the main ways we keep our balance is because our eyes, our inner ears, and the sensory cells in our joints and on our skin and muscles all tell our brain where our body is in space in relation to our surroundings. Changes in how any one of those three systems works will affect our brain's ability to keep us upright. Finally, your environment can put you at risk for falls if you have slippery floors or throw rugs or no non-slip mat in the bathroom, any clutter, especially on the floor, or a dark interior, or even small pets in the home. As you can see from this small list of fall risk factors, we can be at risk for falls for many reasons. You may be wondering about now, what can I do? I have a few of those items above and I don't want to fall. Of course not. The first step you can take is to get screened. Your doctor should be asking screening questions during your annual wellness visits, such as, have you had a fall in the past year? And do you feel steady when you walk or unsteady? Based on how you answer those screening questions, they may refer you to a community evidence-based fall prevention program or to physical therapy for strengthening. They might review your current medication regimen, may refer you for a hearing or eye exam, or for a home safety evaluation. Take the first step, the most important step, in preventing falls and the injuries that can occur from falls. Get screened. For more information on falls, you can go to the CDC website below and review their STEADY initiative. STEADY stands for Stopping Elderly Accidents, Deaths, and Injuries. For a self-screening tool and useful information you can apply in your life right now to help give falls a slip. Thank you again. And for any follow-up questions you may have regarding the content presented today, you can email me at marnab243 at yahoo.com.